Both the New York Times and the New York Post published exposés on one of New York City's largest homeless shelter providers, James A. Brown III. According to these investigations, Brown has turned sheltering the homeless into a lucrative business for himself, reaping more than $1.7 million a year in profits. By starting and managing his own security guard company, catering company, and management company, all of which service his shelters, Brown keeps money flowing his way. Those shelters, as it turns out, are poorly managed with dismal living conditions. The most horrifying examples come from Beach House, one of Mr. Brown's largest shelters. At Beach House, more than a dozen residents interviewed by the Times criticized the services that Coors new companies provided. They said the caterer frequently served them moldy bacon, undercooked meatloaf and powdered eggs, leading to bouts of diarrhea and stomach cramps. The security guards often slept on the job and failed to stop open drug use and violent fights, some said. Almost all the residents who were interviewed said they had developed coughs and breathing problems from mold and moisture that had seeped into their rooms. It's hell in here, said Tracy Covington, 58, who said she has lived in the shelter for about a year with her brother. Worse. It's all funded by taxpayers. Since 2017, New York City, has awarded more than $552 million to a nonprofit run by Mr. Brown to operate shelters. Worse still, Brown is not an isolated case. The New York Times article provides details on several other homeless shelter providers engaging in similar behavior. This year, the city has directed $3.5 billion to nonprofits to operate homeless shelters, and officials already know they have a problem with some of them. Nine of the 62 groups that run shelters are on an internal city watch list for issues that include conflicts of interest and financial problems, according to records reviewed by the Times. All of them continue to receive city funding. According to the New York Times, the city is complicit. In interviews, five current and former officials with the City Department of Social Services, all of whom spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss internal matters, said the city is loath to closely scrutinize the finances of nonprofit groups because it is so reliant on them to deal with the explosion in the homeless population. In response to these breaking stories, Mayor B said, it's not as simple as just get rid of everyone who does anything wrong anytime they do it, because there would be very few, providers, left. This story serves to highlight the discouraging corruption that too often exists within government-funded housing and programs for the homeless which should cool enthusiasm about housing first and other strategies that are heavily reliant on government. Throwing the homeless into housing will not solve the homelessness crisis. It is a far more complex issue in need of more than a one-size-fits-all bandage, and certainly in need of greater accountability. One could also surmise that if homelessness is a lucrative business, the actors that profit would have very little incentive to see real solutions implemented in their city. More people empowered to rise above their current homelessness situation would mean less money in those actors' wallets. Homelessness, a humanitarian crisis, has unfortunately become a lucrative industry for certain entities. Some organizations and individuals exploit the vulnerable conditions of the homeless population for personal gain. From unscrupulous landlords to predatory loan providers, there are those who take advantage of the desperation and limited options available to those experiencing homelessness. Homeless shelters, intended to be safe havens for those in need, have unfortunately become a lucrative business for some organizations. While many shelters genuinely strive to help the homeless, there are instances where profit takes precedence over compassion. One way these organizations profit is by charging exorbitant fees for shelter services. Some shelters exploit the desperation of the homeless by imposing high entry fees, rental fees, or demanding payment for basic amenities. This practice adds to the financial burden already faced by homeless individuals and perpetuates their cycle of poverty. Another concerning aspect is overcrowding and substandard living conditions within certain shelters. Some organizations prioritize maximizing occupancy to increase revenue, leading to cramped spaces and compromised living conditions. This not only jeopardizes the health and safety of the homeless but also demonstrates a lack of genuine concern for their well-being. Another aspect of the profitable business of homelessness is the provision of services. Some service providers, such as healthcare clinics, addiction treatment centers, and counseling services, may prioritize profits over the actual well-being of the homeless individuals they claim to help. Substandard care, 
inflated prices, and inadequate support further exacerbate the challenges faced by the homeless population. The profit-driven nature of some homeless shelters is a deeply concerning issue that requires our attention. By shedding light on this problem, advocating for change, and supporting organizations that prioritize the well-being of the homeless, we can work towards a society where shelter is provided with compassion, dignity, and genuine care. California is facing a homelessness crisis that is getting worse despite the significant amount of money spent to address it. The state has spent nearly $10 billion between 2018 and 2021 to provide services to more than 571,000 people, each year helping more people than the previous year, but a majority of those Californians still remain unsheltered at the end of year three. The state's Interagency Council on Homelessness issued a report that detailed the spending and outcome, but it did not address how the state can spend its money more effectively. Homelessness services are disjointed, spread among nine state agencies, hundreds of county and municipal governments, nonprofits, and charitable organizations. Assemblymember Luz Rivas has introduced a bill that would demand tangible results from local governments before they receive homelessness grants, mirroring an idea from the governor's own budget proposal. The report shows that California has spent $5.5 billion on housing between 2018 and 2021. Some of that spending has been more likely to lead people out of homelessness than others, with only 8% of the more than 75,000 people placed into permanent supportive housing ending. As the number of people experiencing homelessness increases across the country, more cities and states have passed laws making it illegal to live out of tents and cars or sleep in public spaces. More than 100 jurisdictions have had such bans on the books for years, according to the National Homelessness Law Center, 